Before we start, disclaimers are always a must. This is a true crime story. It involves real people, and these real people have real families. So although I do want you to share it, and I do want you to comment, please be sensitive as you do so. Callum Wheeler was born on the 2nd of February in the year 2000. By April 2021, Callum's now 21 years old, and he's unemployed, which was pretty typical. Callum had left school when he was 15, and ever since then, he'd been unemployed. He was living with his dad and his brother in a newly built house on Sunshine Corner Avenue in the village of Aylsham in Kent. He'd lived there for about two years and although it were a small community, he wasn't very active and he wasn't very known. Before moving to the village, he lived in South East London with his mom. Now, after moving in with his dad, he spent a lot of time watching television, most of his time watching television, and he did so in his bedroom. He were a football fan and he did quite often go to the local sports centre on a Tuesday evening to watch the matches. He also liked to play video games, but of all, he didn't really have any interests. He didn't really have any friends either. Even the relationships with his closest family members were tenuous. He was later described as a complete and utter loner whose life consisted of nothing. A loner may be, but he was a loner with a clean slate. He'd never been convicted of anything. He'd not even ever been cautioned by police. It's now spring 2021. Alcott Woods is just starting to come to life. Now, Alcott Woods isn't a forest. It's a really small wood. It's a strange shape and it's surrounded by farmer's fields. Although this woodland is quite a quiet place, you can quite often go there and not be disturbed. It is also very popular with dog walkers in that area. Now, for you that are watching on YouTube, you can see that there's not much around this village. So... Other than walking the streets with a dog, it's pretty much the best place to go. For those of you listening on podcast, this is just a very small village with a population just shy of 6,000 people. Along with its many visitors, Julia James and her husband took their dog there. The dog was called Toby, it was a Jack Russell. 53-year-old Julia James lived in Sundown, which is a little hamlet in Aylsham consisting of just 54 houses. It's situated just half a mile down the road from the rest of Aylsham. Julia was a PCSO, serving as a domestic abuse support officer, and she'd been doing that since 2008. She had a 31-year-old daughter who was also working for the police, a 23-year-old son, and an infant grandson. Unlike Julia, Callum Wheeler didn't have a dog, but he did start to frequent the woods quite often. And when I say started to, I don't just mean in the spring of 2021. He was visiting there all winter. Sightings of him went back to the previous September. But it wasn't only in the woods that Callum was seen acting strange. At some time in the months before April, Callum's presence had been noticed in Julia's tiny hamlet. Now, for you guys on the podcast, you won't be able to see, but right now I'm showing a map of where Callum lived and where Julia lived. Like I said, there's a half a mile road separating Sundown from the rest of Aylsham, but Callum lives on the opposite side of Aylsham as well. So he's not really got any particular reason, any obvious reason, to be at sundown. That's not to say his presence didn't have an innocent explanation, but his presence did get noticed by residents of sundown. Even Julia had been unnerved by him. She'd seen him lurking near her home on numerous occasions. Twice in early 2021, she told her husband about the quote, really weird dude, unquote, lurking in the area. At one point, Julia's husband, Paul, went out to speak to him. Paul said, he was so odd and wouldn't engage me. So I stood my ground and he walked around me. Paul and Julia had both seen Callum in the woods. In fact, it's said that Julia had seen Callum at least three times in the woods. It was about this time that Julia and Paul stopped taking the dog for a walk in the woods. They were just very uneasy about it. But as time passed, Julia regained the confidence in her own safety and she started taking Toby back to the woods for a walk. In the days leading up to Tuesday the 27th of April 2021, Callum had been taking something into the woods in a sports bag. It was never clear what it was, but it looked heavy, it was quite big, it protruded out of his sports bag, but it was always covered up by a carrier bag. So on the 27th of April, 2021, Julia James was working from home. Then at 12 minutes past two, in the afternoon, she took Toby for a walk to Accolt Woods. She had no way of knowing that Callum had already been in the woods, He'd been lurking there since two o'clock. He was there, just laying in wait, waiting for somebody on their own and vulnerable. At 2.25, Julia had got to the woods 
And as she did, she sent a final text off her mobile phone. Then at half past two that afternoon, Callum ambushed Julia. The thing that had been protruding out of his bag was a three kilogram, 97 centimetre long railway jack handle. And that's what he used to attack Julia. Up to this point, Julia had been on a typical route. But it was at this point when Callum jumped out and ambushed her that she came off the typical route and tried to run away. Unfortunately, Julia fell over. We don't know if that's because Callum had hit her on the head or it's just she just tripped. As she landed, she broke her left wrist. She now laid in the edge of the field on the bridle path face down. Callum touched her clothing, including the left breast area of a vest. Now, although that's some very specific detail and it seems very random for me to say, I mean, in a scuffle, it could be a coincidence, it could be an accident that he touched the breast. An handprint being there doesn't necessarily mean anything, but Julia was wearing a jumper and a coat on top of that vest. So touching the left breast section of a vest shows that he's put his hand up her coat, up her jumper and tried to grope her. It's very, very unlikely that this is a coincidence or a mistake. He then repeatedly struck her with a railway jack to the back of her head. The injuries were so widespread when the pathologist was asked how many times she'd been hit, the response was, not one or two, but whether it was eight, nine, or 16, I cannot say. A large area of her head has collapsed, so I cannot say how many blows had taken place before then. Julia's skull had been obliterated, to the extent that over 30 small fragments of bone became detached from her skull during the course of the attack. The pathologist described her injuries as completely unsurvivable, even with immediate medical intervention. He also added that this was one of the worst cases he'd seen in his 12 years of doing the job. As I said, she had a fractured wrist, which suggests that she'd fallen to the ground. Quite strangely, the, the post-mortem didn't show any signs of sustained or violent sexual attack on Julia James. I say strangely because obviously he'd been touching her breast, he'd groped her, so there were a sexual motive to this, but there were no evidence of a sexual attack. There was also no significant defensive injuries, which suggests that she didn't have the capacity to defend herself. It's thought that Julia would have likely been rendered unconscious by the first of the heavy blows, and that she would have been completely unaware of what happened after. Ultimately, Julia James's cause of death was a combination of catastrophic blood loss and brain injury. It also seems that at some point during the attack, Callum will have moved Julia's body a short distance and then continued to attack her. After the attack, he covered up some blood on the ground, wrapped up the weapon and put it away, and then left. At about four o'clock, so about an hour and a half after the attack, an hour and ten minutes after Julia died, Julia was found by a family who was out on a walk. They phoned 999. When the family found Julia, the phone was ringing, and Tobit was still loyal, sat by her side, unarmed and wearing his lead. It was found that nothing had been stolen from Julia, Although, that being said, a keys for a house wasn't found then and still haven't been found since. The glasses were recovered some distance away from her body and in the days after, hundreds of police scoured the area looking for clues. In these days, Callum spent searching the internet, Facebook and Google looking for updates on the investigation. And even with all the police in the area, and there was a lot of police in the area, Callum was still walking around that area and the countryside with the weapon in his bag. He even went back to the area that had killed Julia and watched the police carry out their investigation. Although there was no human witnesses to the attack on Julia, an Apple smartwatch recorded the exact time and location of what happened. Her heart rate had been constantly roughly 97 beats per minute, and then there was a massive spike at half past two to 145 beats per minute. That also matched a change in pace and a sudden detour off her usual walking route. There was no movement after 2.35, and her last heartbeat was recorded at 2.43. Although the smartwatch data provided a little bit more information on what and exactly when it had happened, it didn't provide any clues to who'd done the attack. And let's not forget, this happened on the edge of woodland, which is surrounded by farmer's field. There's not exactly a ton of CCTV or specific entry points to focus on. And to make matters even worse, not only did nobody witnessed the attack or captured it on camera, there's not even been any sightings of Julia leaving her house and getting to the woods. However, and this was a game changer, gamekeeper Gavin Tucker came face to face with Callum on the day after the attack. He was walking through a field 
and Gavin caught him on dash cam and he took a picture of him. At that time, the day after the attack, walking in the area, he still had his sports bag with a weapon protruding out of it, covered with a carrier bag. Gavin stopped and said, well, what, what are you doing? And Callum replied saying something like he was lost or he was new to the area. But this wasn't the first time that Gavin had seen Callum. He'd seen him the previous September. The first time he spotted Callum, he was walking across a field near them woods. Gavin stopped and said, there's no footpath here. Are you lost? And Callum replied to him, telling him to mind his own business. The second time in a similar situation, Callum said he was looking for the train station. Why you'd walk across a field to a train station, I have no idea. But even back then, Gavin didn't like the way that Callum came across and even asked a colleague to keep an eye out for him. But this time in April 2021, Gavin Newells were very close to a police cordon. So this is why he took the picture. He then dialed 999 and handed the dash cam footage and the picture of Callum to the police. With the picture, the police then went round to other law enforcement agencies asking for help trying to identify the mysterious man. But they had no such luck. Then on Friday the 7th of May 2021, 10 days after the attack on Julia, the police released a cropped version of the image that Gavin had took and asked for anyone that knew who this man was. The image did lead to his identification and he was arrested at half past nine that night. Here's the police body cam footage of his arrest. Show me hands, show me your hands. Both hands, show me hands. Step back, step back, step back. Okay, Callum. <laughs> Right. I've got him, I've got him. Right. Right. Okay. Calm. Calm. No Calm. one's going to hurt you. Calm. Nobody's Calm. going to hurt you. Calm. No one's going to hurt you, okay? Calm. Calm. Just relax. Okay. Calm. 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 Breathe. Calm. Calm. Okay. Calm. Okay. No one's going to hurt you, okay? Listen very carefully. Just okay. relax. Relax. Listen, listen, look at me. Handcuffs. Look at me. Okay. Okay. Calm. Calm. Just relax. Nice and Just relax. Okay. I'll relax, but I don't want to bite me. Okay. Just put handcuffs on you. Okay, nice. Right, listen very I'm carefully, Callum. I'm going to say. Hello. All right, all right. Just listen. My name's. I'm going to take my hand away, all right? Callum, are you listening? Okay. You're all right. Good. Good. Well done. I'm Callum, my name's. Hey, we're from Kent Police. Okay, we're not going to hurt well, who, you. Who called listen, you? Listen, relax. We're oh, not here to hurt you. Yeah, yeah. We're not. You're safe, That's all right? It. Come on, my blood is flowing. Right. It's all right. We're not. She's going to kill me in here. No, we're not. No, no. All right, then. Listen, listen. Listen. Okay, you're Callum. right. Callum. Callum. You're right. Right. Callum. Callum. Powerful. Callum. Callum. <coughs> oh. Right, just relax. It's Callum, you're, you're under done arrest done on suspicion no, of murder. Why? Julia James. I haven't done you're it. You're in the area acting suspiciously during the time of the offence, okay? Relax. Calm down. You do not have to say anything. You may harm the offence. Stop struggling. Okay, you do not have to say anything. Stop struggling. I'll put this on tighter. Do you understand me? Yeah? Just relax. Listen to what we're telling you. You need to get around the back. Okay. Was this my mum who said something? No. No, no, no. I think it was. Someone must have told you. I don't know how you, how do you okay. find out, mate? But we're not going to talk. It's not fair for us to talk to you about the events, okay? Because that's yeah, why. Yeah, why am I being dragged into this one? Why? Why, why just because you were seen in the location at but the that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. That but we need anything. to ask you about that in an interview that at police station. Dragged into this. No. Why don't you arrest that guy there? Why don't you arrest one of you? Well, because he wasn't seen in the yeah. location. Yeah, but lots of people were there. There were lots of people there. Yeah, and we may well speak to them as well. But at the moment... Then why, did they, why do people have to be talked to because they were there? Because somebody's been murdered. So somebody's dead. So that's why. During his arrest, it was aggressive and abusive to the police. And something that you don't see on the clip is... Apparently the police had to force their way into his bedroom because he'd barricaded himself in. He demanded who'd ratted on him, but he also remarked, sometimes I do things that I can't control. And he also spoke about wanting a death sentence. Although, he's well out of luck because that has been long gone in the UK. As I said, Callum's got an absolutely clean record. He's also got no known connection to Julia James. But it turns out that 10 days before the murder, two female PCSOs had gone to Callum's home in response to an abandoned 999 call that he had made. However, when the police turned up to his dad's house, Callum refused to talk to them. He laughed and branded them phony and not real police. The whole interaction is very strange. Now, obviously what's happened is he's former police and he's abandoned the call. 
to his uncle. Now, from a police standpoint, that could be someone that's been assaulted and the attacker's hung up. So the police try and phone back, and if you don't answer, then they send someone round to the location where the call was made and find out if everything's okay. And that's all that's happening here. Here's the footage of that occurrence. Um, what's your phone number, Callum? Yeah, apologies, we've got um, an answer now. Um, we're just speaking with them out now. We'll update you shortly. Are you okay? Yeah. Callum. Hang on a minute, why haven't we been talking to you? Go on, get lost. Because you found us, Callum. Go on, get lost, man. Go on, get on your way. Go on, call the someone else. But we wasn't bothering you. I'm talking to you. You're probably going to come into anywhere. You're calling me. Okay. Is your dad there, then? Is your dad there? Mr. Wheeler? Yes, hello. 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 Is everything okay? I yeah, think yeah, we may have had um, a 999 abandon call. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. That's all right, that's okay. Yeah, is everything I, okay? Yeah, he's all right. I, think, I don't know why he just done it for, I don't know, for some reason. I'm not sure. I didn't right. know. Everything's all right, yeah. Okay, no all worries. Right. That's all okay. we're asking. All right, okay, no problem. Thank Take you. Care. Bye. 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 So back to Callum's arrest. After being arrested, he exhibited highly sexualized and inappropriate behaviour. This included exposing himself to female police staff whenever he had the chance. He masturbated in front of a female police officer and made sexually explicit suggestions to another. Also, while in custody, he said that when he were released, he was going to go back to the woods and rape and kill another woman, saying that raping women would satisfy his needs and it would be justified. He would assault women and they deserved it. In police interviews, he made absolutely no admissions, but he did say you can't go to the woods and expect to be safe. Again, telling police that sometimes he does things that he can't control. He also said, and this is going to be quite hard to read out because it is super insensitive. He said he didn't know who Julia was, but she deserved to die for being a fucking fat hunt. The evidence against Callum stacked up well. The railway jack stained in Julia's blood was found propped against his wall in his bedroom and Julia's blood was also found on his night trainers. His DNA was on Julia's boots, a burghouse jacket, and of course, a vest top. The police had also gathered vital evidence from almost 7,000 CCTV cameras that had been downloaded from homes, businesses, and dash cams. If you're on YouTube, you'll be seeing it now, but this footage included the timings and images of Callum in the vicinity of Accolt Wood. Analysis of Callum's laptop revealed that he frawled at numerous porn websites in the weeks before the murder and he googled rape just two days before the murder. Now, when analysing people's digital devices, you can learn a lot about people. The way they talk, the things that they look for, the apps and websites they use, who they talk to, what they're talking about. You can build a really good picture of someone's personality. But in Callum's case, it was an absence of all those things that said so much about him. Here's what the senior investigating officer said. During an investigation such as this, we delve into the person's history. And I have to say, very, very unusually, very little could be found about Callum Wheeler. He, for instance, never used social media. He was an individual who didn't have friends. His phone was surprising because it contained basically nothing. He hardly had any contacts, and in life, he was an absolute loner. He wasn't studying or working. He was somebody who had a life that consisted of absolutely nothing. His relationship with his brother. They didn't even know each other, really. He didn't know what occupation his brother had. Not a great deal came from the family. On Monday the 9th of May, 2022, on day one of his trial, Callum Wheeler accepted responsibility for the killing of Julia James, but he denied murder. But this was a trial for murder, so the trial went on. During the trial, he didn't give evidence. No evidence was called on his behalf by his defence team, and none of the prosecution's evidence was challenged. In a legal document to the court, Callum simply stated, I accept that I did go to a cult wood, and I did kill Julia James. I do not want to plead guilty to the crime of murder. I will plead guilty to the crime of manslaughter. I believe I was suffering from diminished responsibility. Yeah, we should have expected that one, shouldn't we? But on the 16th of May, 2022, the jury of eight women and four men began deliberating 
at 17 minutes past three. And then at half past four, just 73 minutes later, they returned with a guilty murder verdict. The judge set the minimum term starting point at 30 years, classing it as a case where the seriousness of the offence is particularly high, such as a murder involving sexual conduct. The aggravating factors were premeditation, shown by his acquisition and retention of a murder weapon, of which he had no innocent use. His earlier visit to the woods, at which at times he took the weapon with him. The internet searches on the subject of rape. His actions in the immediate aftermath of the attack before leaving the scene, such as concealing the weapon from public view. The extreme nature of violence used. The nature of the victim being a lone woman in a quiet area. There were two mitigating factors, which were his age and his previous good character. The judge then went on to say that he'd read the psychiatric report on Callum. Your medical history is set out in them, and I am aware that you are currently an inpatient at Broadmoor Secure Psychiatric Hospital. However, in the latest report, Dr. Nabi is clear that there is no evidence of a direct link between your disorder and the offence. In those circumstances, I am not urged to reduce the minimum term on account of contents of the psychiatric report, and I do not consider it necessary to do so. Callum Wheeler was then sentenced to a life sentence with a minimum term of 37 years in prison. Now this part is really quite hard. It's the part where I usually pay tribute to the victim. But with Julia, so, so much has been said by so many people. And seriously, just reading out everything that's been said could be easily another 20 minutes to an hour longer video. Another reason that I'm not gonna read much in regards to tributes is because honestly, I don't think I could do it justice. Julia's family tributes and statements were so heartbreaking, especially from a husband who said, my life was finally complete when I married my soulmate. My hopes and dreams have been taken from me. I felt I died too. My life has been jolted by the devastation and trauma. Now, we often put down the police and we all know that there's police that are only in the force because it's an ego trip. They feel like they need to have power. But with somebody like Julia James, I don't think that's the case. She was a domestic abuse officer. She weren't wielding power anywhere. She was trying to help. She was trying to make the world a better place. So although I feel bad for not paying a massive tribute, I do generally think that she was an amazing person and my heart goes out to her family, her friends, and the entire community. I've done with all the information, but there's still a lot of unanswered questions to the case. What was the motive? It's assumed by me and the judge to be sexual, but even to that, I have to wonder. There is proof that he put his hand up her top to grope her, but then he did nothing else. Why is that? Did he lose a nerve? Did someone disturb him? Did something disturb him? Was the dog causing a scene? Or was it not even sexually motivated at all? Maybe it's because it was sexually motivated, but he didn't intend to kill her. It's also still a major mystery how he got the railway jack. If you don't know what that is, the railway jack usually is used to lift railways, railway tracks. And this is the handle off it, which like I said, is just shy of a meter long and it's three kilograms in weight. He had no connection to the railways. It never worked there. He hadn't purchased it lawfully, but there is a train track nearby. So had he been walking down the train track one day and seen it, who knows? But also why did he choose such a big heavy weapon? And also with a weapon, in the days after, why did he continue walking around with it? It's not small and discreet, it's protruding out of his back. Was he gloating? Was he rubbing it into the police's face? Which some killers and serial killers quite often do. They like to make it overly obvious that look, I'm here and you still haven't caught me. Maybe he was hoping to find another victim. Maybe he was too scared to leave it at home. Where is Julia's house keys? Did he take them? Or maybe when she was running away or before even that point, did she lose them? Which I find unlikely because the police will have checked every inch of that woodland and the path and the route she walked. Having no record of contact between the two, it's thought that it weren't particularly a targeted attack. It's thought that it didn't even target her from the woods. It was more of a spur of the moment, albeit premeditated. But then I do have to wonder, it kept appearing around her estate. Why her estate? Was it really not targeted? And that makes me think about the abandoned 999 call. That was only 10 days before. Was he wanting to see who turned up and how they reacted? Were he just bored and having a bit of childish fun? Or was he hoping that Julia would turn up as well? Maybe he knew she was a police officer. 
and it's still unsure why Callum went to the wood so often. The judge pointed out that he couldn't be sure whether Callum was doing recon or if he was actually looking for a victim to attack every time he went. Let me know what you think to all them questions down in the description. My love goes out to Julia's family. Till next week, goodbye.